right. Uh, greetings, listeners and newcomers to Red Ice Radio. Thank you for stopping by. It's good to have you with us today. My name is Henrik Palmgren, and I hope that you are comfortable when and wherever you are in the world and uh, ready for some eye-opening, mind-expanding and revealing radio as we are going to go into the electric universe with our guest Wallace Thornhill today, who joins us from Australia. I hope that you're familiar with his work. Uh, if not, this is, will be a good uh, opportunity uh, for you to learn about some of his work and research. Uh, he has been working close with David Talbot over at Thunderbolts.info, and he's uh, one of the voices in the excellent Thunderbolts of the Gods DVD. He is also the author of the book, The Electric Universe. Uh, we here at Red Ice have been following the electric universe theory with uh, great interest over the years, and Wall, together with David, have been doing some really fascinating work and uh, discoveries over the years. Uh, and as you might remember, if you have been us, uh, with us here for a while on Red Ice Radio, we've had uh, both Donald Scott and also Rens van der Sluis with us on the program before, who uh, also are associated with Thunderbolts.info. Uh, Wolf's own personal website is holoscience.com. That's the place to go to find out more about him and his material and his book, of course. Uh, but also do take a look at Thunderbolts.info to see a lot of Wolf's contributions there. Uh, so with that, welcome to Red Eyes Radio, Wallace. It's uh, great to have you with us, and thank you for joining us. Thanks very much, Hendrik. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Uh, so much uh, that I want to talk with you about, and I'm very excited to have you on the program with us. But maybe first, as a, as a way of introducing uh, you to our listeners a little bit, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background first and, and, and uh, in terms of when you first got involved uh, in researching the electric universe. Okay, um, I'm an Australian and I was born in Melbourne in uh, Victoria and I went to university uh, at Melbourne University and did physics and electronics but in some respects I was almost self-taught in electronics because uh, while I was at university I was um, fixing television sets uh, as a means of um, raising a bit of cash. Uh, well, before I went to university I had read a book which I think could be said to be uh, something that changed my life, and that was Emmanuel Velikovsky's Worlds in Collision. And uh, I was very surprised when I got to the university to find uh, disinterest and even hostility towards his ideas, which were that the solar system has a recent history. When I say recent, uh, I mean in prehistory, but remembered by uh, uh, modern humans. And uh, I began a research year with uh, an upper atmosphere group, uh, but at halfway through that year I decided that uh, academia was no place for me because uh, I wouldn't get any answers to the questions that I had and I'd have to research them on my own. So I joined the uh, computing industry and uh, spent my career uh, with IBM and with the Australian government. In part of that work with the government, I got to travel a lot overseas and I was involved with the uh, Society for Interdisciplinary Studies in England and was on their committee when I was uh, posted to London for several years. Uh, when I got back home, I uh, got in touch with David Talbot, whom I'd actually met in 1974 uh, at the uh, International Conference on Velikovsky's work in uh, Canada. Mm. Uh, at the time, neither of us knew precisely what the other one was up to. But in 90, 1994, exactly 20 years later, I rang him to see if he had a copy of uh, his book called The Saturn Myth, which dealt with a reconstruction of something that came out of a, a um, story that was not published at the time by Velikovsky about the m memory of uh, the planet Saturn as a sun, which is quite an odd concept. Mm. Uh, David uh, said to me that uh, he didn't have any copies of the book to sell uh, and he did, had no plans to republish it because he'd advanced so far beyond that that uh, it wasn't worth uh, republishing. But he said that he was having an international conference uh, in Portland, Oregon and uh, asked me if I had something to contribute. Well, uh, as it happened, I certainly did. So uh, I attended that conference and I found what David was uh, working on at that time 
and I said to him that uh, we should collaborate because what you've shown me are electrical effects in space. And uh, from that point, our collaboration grew and I spent some time in the US uh, uh, speaking at uh, various conferences over there. Uh, the Thunderbolts group was set up. Uh, we began publishing books and DVDs and films and so on. And uh, the result of all this uh, has culminated in what you now see on the websites. Excellent. Uh, uh, it, it's a really, it's a fascinating uh, study also to see how Thunderbolts have, have grew and how a lot of additions have come to it throughout the years. And uh, uh, yes. w were you also interested in terms of the, 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 the ancient, if we can call it that, then the st ancient structure of the solar system in terms of Velikovsky and also what David Talbot then brought out that, that you, if I put it this way, do, do you go in line with the uh, catastrophe theory in, in that regard, that, that something happened in our solar system uh, in in past as well? Yes, while I was at university, I spent a lot of time in the anthropology shelves at the uh, university library, and I discovered that the evidence that Velikovsky had amassed for something strange going on in the solar system was uh, it just leapt off the page. It didn't matter what I read, whether it was referenced by Velikovsky or not. Uh, the picture it was quite clear that something had happened. Consequently, uh, I, uh, I decided that I needed to find out what it was that we didn't know about gravity, about what controls the uh, planets and their motions around the sun because it was evident from what Velikovsky said that uh, electricity played some role, but we don't see that happening today. And in fact, I was lucky enough to be able to take advantage of uh, a trip to uh, Washington, D.C. to ring Velikovsky at his home in uh, Princeton, New Jersey, and he very kindly uh, uh, gave me an invitation to visit him, uh, along with my family who were with me at the time, and so I got to talk to him about this question because really the astronomers had dismissed his views out of hand because they said that it didn't uh, meet Newton's uh, laws of uh, the dynamics of the solar system. Hmm. And so I said to Velikovsky, what is it we don't understand about gravity? And he gave me a, a slim volume uh, which he was not keen to have uh, republished, uh, which talked about the cosmos without gravitation. And he was of the view that gravity itself was a weak electrical force. Uh, I took that idea away with me, and a few years later, I came across a small uh, advertisement in the Scientific American. It was in 1981. And it was called the Journal of Classical Physics. And that interested me greatly because I felt that we needed to return to the common sense of classical physics and find out where we'd uh, more or less left the rails, so to speak, mm. in uh, modern physics. And uh, that uh, gave me the clues. I, I wrote to the editor of that small journal, uh, and uh, we corresponded and visited each other. And uh, from that grew the idea of the electrical nature of matter and how the gravitational force could actually be explained. Mm. Out of that, it took many years, though, to get over the idea that Einstein had in some way explained what gravity was. He hadn't. All he'd given was uh, a mathematical expression which uh, works but doesn't explain anything. Uh, and so I was looking 